Okay, I really went falling out with my costume today. Well, as I dress up for my reviews. And hello, everyone, for today's review. That was a bit too loud. <laughs> okay. Um, so last night, I got to see a new, the, new, the new release of The Magnificent Seven, which is itself this one, which is the one here today. It's a remake of a remake. So it's a remake of the 1960s. Magnificent Seven, which itself is a remake of the classic Akira Kurosawa's um, uh, Seven Samurai, which is among the greatest films ever made. And, of course, like this film is among the Western genre. There's a lot of tropes, a lot of stuff you see in this movie. And the Magnificent Seven is basically a typical trope of a Western type of story, as we've seen it before. You know, a bunch of misfits, type of cowboy misfits, type of villains come into a town, they take it over to kill a bunch of innocent people, really. And there's only like one, I think. I think there's only like one witness, and it passes it on to one of the main, to the main character in this movie, who's played by the always awesome Denzel Washington, and he and essentially he rounds up a bunch of other cowboys, <laughs> and um, they basically band together and they bound to take over, they take over this town, and essentially stay for it as long as they could until they get rid of the villains, and that's a mis. I mean, that's our main but a basic story, and they will defend this town to the very last breath if they have to. And that's the main story for this film. This film, I was really weirdly very hyped for. I was like, for the last like for a good while, I'm like, eh, make remake of a Western. I'm like, I'm not too hard on them, but you know what? Sure, I'll see it. It got some fairly good praise, but not not like perfect praise. This has like like 63, 64 Rotten Tomatoes. And after watching the film, I'm both kind of like I can see why, but it's like there's still some really good in this movie. So for, first things first, recent westerns in my opinion have been really good. Of course, like I have right here, *The Good and the Ugly*, classic western among the all-time greats, in my view. Uh, and a bunch of modern, modern good ones too, like *Django Unchained* and *Hateful Eight*. I love these movies both. Personally, I like I personally prefer *Hateful Eight* over *Django Unchained*. Both Tarantino movies. Uh, but regardless of that, um, this movie was really interesting to see because first things first, the cast, superb. It's really superb, and I love everyone in this movie. Vincent D'Onofrio has this weird type of slang, western, biblical talk to him that I really liked a lot. I thought it was really cool, and how he talked. It was just, to me, it was just totally, like, indulgence of a stereotypical type of western character. And I loved it. It was so fun and kind of cheesy and ridiculous. That I just I just ate it up. To me, it was just ridiculous. And also, you also got some other really good actors, such as uh, Ethan Hawke and Chris Pratt and Denzel, Denzel Washington. And I'm missing anyone else. Uh, Peter Sarsgaard as well. And like the cast in this movie is really good, and they all shine among the others, and they all get a great moment to show because this is just a big diverse movie with like a bunch of like you know stereotypical type of Western characters. And Denzel Washington brings the gravitas and the maturity to his character. Chris Pratt gives, gives a lot of fun and wit to his character. Um, Ethan Hawke gives a lot of grime and almost like a lot of grime and real old type of um, game to old for this type of shit type of character that he brings to this film I just thought they were all great and they all give great performances and it's really good also the cinematography is really great as well I loved the way this movie looked it was pure cinematic galore of westerns it looks gorgeous I loved the way it shot whoever the cinema also the, the, in tangent with the cinematographer the director Antoine Fuqua Antoine Fuqua is an, a director I really like, and you know what? Um, like Training Day and a bunch of other, it was, and Training Day, um, the the Equalizer, a bunch of its films, I really damn enjoy a lot. And it's kind of weird to say that I actually do kind of enjoy enjoy King Arthur. I know a lot of people consider that his weakest film, but it is like the director's cut is really good in my opinion. Yeah, the original version great, but. Regardless, I really do enjoy the director's cut on that film. But regardless of that, 
Um, yeah, but I think he, I, I love how he brought this film to just a unique, wide range of feel. Like, the, just, it just feels epic in scope. And the cast, and the directing, it just feels massive and epic. And it really is just a big film. And really, for me, is Okay, this is getting ridiculous. I'm just going to put this right here. Um, but regardless of that, um, for me, it's just like a real beautiful looking movie. And the the way it kind of builds into this movie, like the first 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, I'm like, this is so good. I love this build up. It's so interesting. I love how I, I love how to get all the characters in this movie uh, a real moment to shine and their own little like pathways. <gasps> Excuse me. Um, on how they get introduced into the movie. I love how they do that. I love how everyone, like how they get introduced into the movie is really interesting. I particularly, uh, Chris Pratt's character, the way he's introduced and brought into the main storyline of this film, I thought was so good. I was so captivated and just charmed by him because he's you know Chris Pratt. For the record, it, it's pretty hard um, for any guy or girl to, not, to just not love him. Even if you don't like Jurassic World, which I heard a lot of people don't, but that's just them, whatever. Uh, regardless, it's totally a, a, off topic, but whatever. Um, again, it's like the cast and the chemistry everyone has is so good. The middle part of this movie is very slow and it does drag to a big halt. And, and while it kind of like Saving Private Ryan, which is one of my favorite films ever, is that they definitely do slow it down to build the characters and build their dynamics and their chemistry to see, you know, what happens in the end. That much more devastating. Don't give me too much away. Um, I have a feeling that I'm not talking clearly into this. But regardless of that, um, for me, it's like the, the middle part of that. Like, there's like a good 30, 40 minute point in this movie where I'm like sitting in the theater and I'm like okay this is cool this is interesting not really the most dynamic or interesting or but I do really like the characters and how they're kind of chemistry back to forward I'm like is it further in the story no is it kind of cliche at times and it kind of seems unoriginal yeah but regardless it's still a very interesting film that keeps you still consistently on your toes even if the middle feels like a big safe haven even and while I can understand that for uh, a plot understanding perspective, as a real piece of entertainment, it just feels like it grinds everything to a big hole, and you're just kind of like... <sighs> okay, good action. Right, right. It really just kind of slows the movie down, and it's that big 40-minute uh, middle section, in my opinion, that really just halts everything to a big hole, and that's my... One of my biggest problems with this movie, as well as its own attributes. As much as I enjoyed this film as a lot, it feels very rinse and repeat. It feels like there's nothing original nor creative about this movie. And while I've been one to kind of uh, dismiss this on on my review of Spectre from last year, which is like like the best of James Bond but in one movie, which a lot of people complained about, for me it's like... Uh, I, I'm definitely going to be a lot more harsh on this film as long as Jason Bourne for ha doing that same attributes. It's like what was so great in those films in the film, previous films before, jump into one big movie and it's like it's not the most original thing. Now, I'm the type of person, personally speaking, who's willing to forgive that as long as it's entertaining and I like it. But for the most part, it's a western, and you know, in the first place, these type of movies are going to have a real slow type of build and pace to them. Unfortunately, this movie suffers because of that, and I feel like there's a great strain of just all around pleasantness. I wouldn't say pleasantness, but it feels very much lacked in on the entertainment factor. While this is, these are interesting moments and good things for the characters to explore, overall, I just don't really care for the middle part, even even if it was okay and decent in my eyes. It's like it still was like a big problem. However, every just like with Blair Witch, which is a far which is a which is a far lesser film in my eyes in, in comparison. Like this like comparing this film to Blair Witch is like comparing the good, bad and the ugly to Blazing Saddles. There's like a big difference. 
Well, it's like comparing, I don't know, uh, some, you can draw your own conclusion to any type of comparison there. Regardless, um, it's all made, this is with Blair Witch, it's made up in the last act. The last 20, mi 20 minutes of this movie, just like with Blair Witch, makes up for everything else. The way it's shot, the action, the characters, and how, again, without giving too much away, how certain characters die. It's like a real Western galore of just porn of Western style greatness. The last 20 minutes are like, this is what the movie should have been. A, a unique, well done movie for its own sake and yet continuing to do something interesting and cool with the series. Yes, this is a remake, so therefore you, there's certain attributes within it that you can't really break. Like it's a bit of a tradition. But in the end, you feel like Film, please do something different, please, and then just kind of does not. So yeah. However, like I said in the end, the the action, good God, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. In the end, it's oh, it's one of the best. Uh, I'm gonna say endings, but it's one of the best finales in any movie this year so far. It really is, and I like. For the beginning and the end of this movie, like the first first 20, 30 minutes of the this film and the, of the beginning and the end of this film, it's like, yes, that's how it should be. The middle is its biggest weakness, and like I was saying, like I said before, in the end, that's just my view in the film. And for me, overall, I feel like this movie's a bit of a split, a bit a bit of a split. Like for me, is it every good thing I can say about this movie? I can say a bad thing about oh the villain. The villain is, in the beginning, you're like, okay, this guy's quite weird, but cool. And by the end, he's just like a typical villain. Like, eh, I'm a Western villain. I'm like, fuck off. He's terribly unoriginal. <laughs> oh, whatever. Um, but regardless, in my view, The Magnificent Seven is not really a magnificent remake of his own, right? But it's not terrible either. It's good. In my view, it is just good. So, in my in my view, in my rating, I'm gonna give the Magnificent Seven a. <sighs> give me a moment. Okay, as of right now, I'm gonna give the Magnificent Seven a seventy percent. That's my rating, everyone, for the film. I really do hope uh, you enjoy it. And uh, yeah, stick around for uh, this weekend when I will see. Um, the new Mark Wahlberg movie, um, let's check that, let's check that out, Deepwater Horizon, that's it, this weekend I'm going to see Deepwater Horizon, and yeah, uh, hopefully for you guys, I will see that movie by then, and maybe it will be, um, I'll, I may see that tomorrow, so yeah. I may see that maybe tomorrow, and so yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow with or Sunday with a review of Deepwater Horizon for you guys. So yeah, stick around for this weekend, everyone, and yeah, have a great Friday. Uh, till the end, I dare the adieu, farewell, goodbye.